In the early days of my fitness journey, I was always cautioned against squats. I was told that doing them would lead to knee and back pain. While there is some truth to this statement, stick around to find out why this is only part of the story and learn how when performed correctly, the squat can not only be a great tool for building strong and athletic legs, it can also heal a lot of the issues associated with our largely sedentary lives. When I was doing my university degree in health and physical activity, it was common practice that when squatting, we're taught that the knees should never go beyond the toes and the hips should never drop below the knees. The logic behind this was that exceeding this range of motion puts additional stress on the associated joints and ligaments. The issue with this approach is that through limiting your range of motion, you are negating some of the biggest benefits that only come from performing the lower part of the movement. You're also increasing your risk of injury through not teaching the body how to safely operate when the knees do inevitably go past the ankles and the hips drop below the knees. The full depth squat requires large amounts of ankle and hip mobility, which are incredibly important in day-to-day -day life and for keeping your spine healthy. If you are unable to rest comfortably in a deep squat, it's a good indication that you have tight hips and lack ankle mobility. I've found that training full range of motion squats has been a great way to fix both of these limitations. When I first started my Muay Thai journey, one of the things I noticed was that all my crews could do deep squats, front splits, side splits, and many other impressive feats that require a good combination of both flexibility and strength. A lot of the conditioning work we do in Muay Thai is squat related. We'll often warm up with assisted Cossack squats, do bodyweight squats at the end of rounds, and jump squats at the end of the session to burn us out and improve our conditioning even further. Personally, I'm not naturally flexible, and I had a pretty bad ankle injury when I was younger, so I'm missing one of the ligaments that helps keep them stable. My crews would all comment on how stiff my movements looked. So I started taking squat training a bit more seriously and looked at ways in which I could improve my range of motion. What I found worked best was treating it in the same way that I do with flexibility training. This meant spending lots of time getting comfortable in the uncomfortable portion of the squat position, followed by rest and repeat. Over time, this trained my body to not only be relaxed in this position, but also strong so that I can fully trust my joints and ligaments won't disintegrate when exploding out of the squat position. I have even managed to progress my training to more advanced movements that I thought I'd never be able to do due to my limiting ankle and hip mobility. My coaches have also noticed the improvement and commented that it is helping with other aspects of my Muay Thai journey, such as kicks and knees, which benefit from the improved ankle and hip mobility. <laughs> If you work an office job where you are seated for most of the day and wear shoes with an elevated heel, then chances are that your hips and ankles will be very stiff to begin with. Walking barefoot or in flat soled shoes is an easy way to start improving your ankle mobility. Ow. 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 As with all training, this process has been a long journey. So take your time as rest and recovery are extremely important for progress and injury prevention. Start by gently resting in a squat position for around five to 10 minutes per day. Do sets of one minute followed by one minute of rest and repeat this five to 10 times throughout the day. If using an assist helps you get deeper, then take advantage of this. Also try not to be too static. Move around a bit and explore how your body reacts to the position. I also recommend working some unilateral movements such as the Cossack squat, as this loads each ankle further, which builds even greater strength and ankle mobility. The pistol squat is also a great option, as now you are incorporating some balance training, which is also an important factor in injury prevention. Again, feel free to use an assist if you find this helpful. Just note that this takes away the balance component, so work toward doing them unassisted. Dragon squats also require a good combination of balance, flexibility, and strength to perform. They've also helped to bulletproof my compromised ankles through developing the strength and stability to hold me in this unique position. The final element is learning how to explode out of the position. 
Jump squats are great for making this a more practical movement that will translate over to sport and more athletic abilities. You are also required to land softly, which trains your body to absorb impact better. Plyometric training of this nature has been shown to help with injury prevention as well. It's unfortunate that like me, a lot of people are misguided when first starting their fitness journey. In my experience, achieving a deep squat has improved my athleticism, allowed my hips to open up, which has helped tremendously with my Muay Thai journey, bulletproof my ankles and knees, which has allowed me to train injury free at a very high intensity for a long time now, and reduce back aches and stiffness post training as it helps to decompress the spine. Thank you so much for all the support and love you guys have been showing. It's very much appreciated. As always, if you have any questions, comments, or abuse, drop them down below. Cheers. Chin conditioning. <laughs>